Uh, questions from the re, uh, from three six. Let's do those first. Yeah. Okay. Number thirty. Is that good with everybody? Okay. Is thirty similar to something we did in class? Yes. It, it's it's kind of similar to something we did in class. Uh, this one says two cars are approaching an intersection. One is two miles south of the intersection and is moving at a constant speed at thirty miles per hour. Uh, at the same time, another car is three miles east of the intersection and is moving at a constant speed of 40 miles per hour. Okay, We did one um, the other day where we did this. They were moving away from the intersection, and I think this was like 40T and this was 30T or something like that. Okay, These distances were getting bigger, right? Okay, On this problem, we've got the first car is two miles south of the intersection. Okay, So this is two miles right here. The other car is three miles east, okay, and this would be the distance between them, okay, so we could use a D for that, but here's the problem. This, both of these, instead of going away from the intersection, instead of increasing their distance from uh, this intersection, they're actually going toward it, so it's decreasing. So I think I showed you one uh, yesterday that looked something like this. I said, hey, what if, this, what if we gave this one a one-mile head start? then the distance would be the one mile plus 40t. And what if we gave this one a two mile head start and it was going 30 miles per hour? Then its distance would be two plus 30t. Well, this is we're adding this because the distance is getting bigger and bigger and bigger as time goes by, right? What's happening if I'm heading toward that intersection from both directions? If this one is at, what was this one? This one is 30 miles per hour, oops, miles per hour, and this one is 40 miles per hour. What's happening to the distance? It's getting smaller, so we'd subtract instead of add. Does that make sense? So let's draw a picture of what this looks like then. This starts out at 3, but it's getting smaller at a rate of 40 miles per hour. This one starts out at 2, and it's getting smaller at a rate of... 30 miles per hour. Oops. I should put a T there. Okay. Yeah. How do you substitute the distance time formula into that whole thing? Uh, let's, so let's look at a simple example here. Distance equals rate times time. If this is 40 miles per hour, that's its rate. So we'd put a 40 right there, and then we just multiply it by time. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Anything else? Okay. So here's D. So D would equal a big square root. This one squared, so I'd have a 2 minus 30t quantity squared and a 3 minus 40t quantity squared, and that would be it. Okay? Um, it does say, so it says express the distance D between the cars as a function of time. There it is. Okay? And it says use a graphing utility to find uh, what value where of t is d the smallest. So we'd want to find where, well, let's see. Throw that into a calculator and graph it, right? We're not going to use calculators on the test. Nope. So could I give you, uh, could I ask you to set something like this up? Yeah. Sure. Could I ask you to do this next part? Nope. Okay. No calculator on the test. Okay. You, you really don't need a calculator of any type. The numbers are pretty darn small. Okay. I mean, if, if you can take, say, 3 and divide it by 27 and reduce that, that's about as tough as it gets. Okay. Let me write that down for you. 3 over 27, so you can see it. That's not bad, is it? Okay. It's 1 eighth, right? Thank you very much. 1 ninth. Okay. Okay, so if we have something like this, um, there's a T here, and our calculator is good with X's, so we'll just turn this on, and I'm going to go to Y equals big square root. Um, I'm going to delete all of this ugly stuff, and we're going to start typing this in. So this is going to be parentheses. So notice that set of parentheses is what we're taking the square root of. We're taking the square root of this squared, so I start a set of parentheses, 2 minus 30X quantity squared, and then plus <coughs> 3 minus 40x quantity squared. Close the parentheses, there it is, and then I just graph that. Um, 
I'm going to hit Zoom 6, graph it in the standard window. Uh, this will happen quite often. It looks pretty awful. Okay, You can hardly see anything. It's way up here and not very wide. So maybe we'd change our window and we'd go from, it didn't look like it was very wide. Maybe we'd go uh, negative 1 to positive 1. And then we don't need any negatives because this is talking about a distance, but I'm going to leave this at 0. And maybe we'll go up to 100 and see if that doesn't look a little bit better. Not too bad there. Um, so that's going to 100 is a little extreme. We just want to find the minimum. So we'd probably want to be somewhere around there. So I'll change the window. Um, I'm going to bring back the negatives just so I've got um, some quantities that I can see here. So this is, I'm going to do negative 5 to maybe 15. And that looks pretty good. There's the minimum right there. Kind of looks like a V-shape, doesn't it? Okay. All right. Any questions? Uh, the minimum is, uh, I, I, well, let's see. Um, let's see what happens here. Does it ever get down to, let's, let's find the min. So we hit calculate, min. Um, my guess is it's it's never quite zero, so we'll go here, and we'll go here, but I suppose it could be. Whoops. Anyway, you you get the point. I I, I can't give you one like this on the test, so let's move on to something we might see on the test. Uh, let's see. Any other questions on three six? What's that? Yeah, this is fine right here. If you want to square things out and collect like terms, that's fine. But I just leave it like that. Okay. All right. Uh, let's take a look at the review then. Here's the review. Um, it looks like this. It's got a description. So I'll just read through these really quickly. Find the slope of a line when given two points of the equation of a line. Write the equation of a line in point slope or slope intercept. You need both of those. So you need um, y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. If it says leave it in point slope form, leave it in point slope form. Of course, slope intercept looks like this. Okay, They're both really good. Determine if two lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. How do you tell if they're parallel? Exact same slopes. How do you tell if they're perpendicular? Slopes are opposite reciprocal. So they've got to have different signs, and you take one and flip it over. What if it's not a fraction? What if it's something like this? What if the slope is 2? How do you make it a fraction? It's still a fraction. You put it over 1, so its reciprocal would be 1 half, and it would be the opposite, so it would be negative 1 half. Okay? Determine if a graph uh, comes from a function. How do you tell that? Determine whether or not, not a graph came from a function. I see this. I see a, I think... It's a vertical line test, right? Okay, so it's got to pass the vertical line test. Find the domain and range of a function by looking at its graph. How do you find the domain? Take the graph and squish it on the x-axis. How do you find the range? Take the graph, squish it onto the y-axis, and you figure what part of it would be covered or shaded if you want to think of it that way. Okay, find the function values for a given function or graph. There are some problems on the review that are like that. Okay, so if I say find f of 3... You go to 3 on the x-axis, so if we had something like this, if 1, 2, 3, if that's 3, where is f of 3? It's right there, okay? So you'd follow this over, and let's say this is 2, so f of 3 would be 2, okay? You've got that, you have to be able to do that, okay? Um, let's see, find the maximum, minimum, or minimum values and state where they occur. Okay, let's say we had something like this, okay? Um, what is what is a minimum, first of all? Lowest point. What's a maximum? Highest point. Okay. What's an absolute maximum? The absolute biggest function value, right? The absolute highest point. What's a relative maximum or a local maximum? Highest point in a general area. Okay. So let's, I'm going to point to a couple things. Okay. There are four points of interest on this guy right here. 
Okay, let me erase that one. Hopefully not the whole thing. There we go. Okay. What is, what's the best way to describe this? Absolute minimum. Absolute or global minimum. Okay. What's the best way to describe this? Local max. Local min. Global or absolute max. Okay. Any questions there? Okay. That's what we're talking about when we say max or min. Okay. And remember, if I say what is the maximum, okay, then you'd give me the y value. If I say where does it occur, then you give me the x value. Okay. So keep those things straight. Uh, sketch all the parent graphs and label key points. Every single one of those parent graphs. Now remember, um, I probably wouldn't give you that, that greatest integer function, that step function. That probably wouldn't show up there, okay? but I'd be aware of that. And piecewise functions aren't really parent functions. They're kind of a category. You can take all of those parent functions, all of those that we learned, so constant, linear, identity, squaring function, square root, cubing, cube root, absolute value, all of those are things that you need to know, okay? You can expect to find one of each of those on the test. You better know what they look like. So if I say, hey, what does the absolute value look like? It's a V-shape, right? Okay. If I said, what does X cubed look like? Starts down here and ends up here. Looks like this, right? Okay. What about a uh, square root graph? Top half of a sideways parabola, right? Okay, you have to know those things. Okay, each, each one of those is going to be on the test. Okay, uh, know the names of the parent functions as well. Graph a transformation of the parent function involving flipping, stretching, shrinking, horizontal, and uh, vertical sh shifting. So any one of those graphs, we could take it and we could flip it, okay, horizontally or vertically, either way. Slide right or left, up or down, vertically stretch it, vertically shrink it, horizontally stretch it or shrink it. You'd need to know all of those. Okay? Um, and again, that's if, if you get stuck on anything, there are lots of uh, uh, videos that you can watch, the lectures, the notes, and stuff like that that you can refer to. Determine whether a function is odd, even, or neither based on the graph or the equation. Okay? How do you tell by looking at a graph whether or not it's odd or even? How'd your test go? I hope your test went well, because apparently you turned your brains off as far as math goes. Shane? You replace all the x's and the negative x. Okay, so that, that's the test whether we were if we were given a graph. So if you plug in a negative x and you get exactly the same thing, that's even. What if you plug in a negative x and you get the exact opposite of what you used to have? That's odd. What if you plug in a negative and it's not the same and it's not the exact opposite? then it's neither. Okay, that's how you tell based on a based on a function. Okay? That's algebraically how you tell. How do you tell by looking at a graph? Yes, Emily. Okay, even is symmetric with the y axis. The right looks just the same as the left. Okay, and odd is symmetric with the origin. So you can put your pencil on the origin, turn it 180 degrees and it looks exactly the same. Okay? The two graphs that we use most for that are x squared and x cubed. Okay, Those are easy ones. You're really familiar with this. That is an even function because it's symmetric with the y-axis. This is an odd function because if we took this and spun it 180 degrees, it looks exactly the same. Okay, They'd have those corresponding points, remember? Like that was 2, 4, and this was, whoops, negative 2, 4, and this is 2, 4. Whether you go to the right 2 or to the left 2 doesn't make any difference. You still get a function value of 4. On this one, 2, 8, what's the one over here? Negative 2, negative 8. So whether you go right or left, you get an 8, but you get a different sign on either side. If you go to the right, it's positive. If you go to the left, it's negative. Okay? Any questions? Okay. Uh, determine intervals on which the function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. Okay? Intervals. Intervals. So let me give you a quick example. Let's say I had a function that looked like this. Uh, let's do this one right here, actually. Okay, so this is negative 4, um, this is negative 1, this is 2, and this is 6. Okay, what's the function doing from negative 4 to negative 1? It's going up, right? So it's increasing. So it's increasing on the interval from negative 4 
to negative 1. Okay? That's the interval on which it's increasing. Okay? You can have square brackets around that too. You could argue about what's happening at the endpoints. Okay? Where else is it increasing? Okay? Don't, don't say anything out loud. My question is, where else is it increasing? From where to where? Now, if your answer is from here up to here, I just asked you a question about where. When I say where does something happen, which variable am I talking about? I'm talking about x. So where, does, where else is it increasing? From 2 all the way to 6. Okay? And we'd put a union between those. All right? Where is it decreasing? From negative 1 to positive 2. So from negative 1 to positive 2, it's decreasing. Here it's increasing. Okay? Find a composite in stated domain. That's the stuff in 3.5. We did a bunch of those problems this week, if you have any trouble with that. I also answered a bunch of those before we corrected the assignment yesterday. Okay, that's in 3.5, so make sure you refer to that if you have trouble. And then solve story problems similar to those that we solved in 3.6. I'm not a big fan of tricking you. I just want to make sure you've paid attention and you know what we're doing. So I would expect to find something on the test that's similar not exactly like, but similar to the problems that we did on uh, in the lecture. Okay, because I tried to pick ones that were also similar to the ones on the assignment. Chase. Uh, I was going to say, like, I was trying to be similar to the ones on the assignment. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm not trying to kill you. I'm just trying to see if you've paid attention. Okay, it's not going to be the easiest one, and it's not going to be anywhere near close to the hardest one. Okay. Okay. So these problems right here, 172, 182, 276, and uh, 270, this is a pain in the butt, by the way, to go through and find on four different pages problems that I think would be good for you to review. So I didn't just slap these together. Okay, I put some thought into these. So go through and do each one of those problems. I said you only have to do 25 of the 33. If I were you, I'd do all 33 because I picked them all for a reason. Okay, But notice it says... For these problems right here, write your answer in point slope and slope intercept form. You better know how to do both for the test. I wouldn't write that for no reason. Okay, on these problems, write the answer in point slope or slope intercept form, whichever you prefer. So some of these, I'm asking you to practice both of them and then take your pick which way you write it for those. Bunch of good problems right here. Okay, and then review any two problems involving rectangles or triangles. Okay. So this is page 270. That's the stuff for 3.6. Find a problem involving rectangles or one involving triangles and make sure you know how to do it. I would do a couple of them. I'd do three or four. I'd go back and watch the lecture if you need to again. Okay? Are there any questions? Okay? Do you want to see anything from the review? Yeah. On which page? 276. Okay, so 276, number 21. Okay, so 21 is this. This has a name. What is this? Uh, not on this one. It is a piecewise function. Thank you very much. Okay, it's a piecewise function. Yeah, we'll live. Okay. What shape is this right here? It's a line. What's the slope? Zero. Slope? Slope is three. What's the y-intercept? Zero. Okay. So if we're going to graph that first piece, here's what we'll do. We'll have it cross at zero, and we'll have a slope of three. Okay. So it's going to look something like this. The next question is, where does it look like that? Where does it look like that? It's not the whole line. It only looks like that line from negative 2 to 1. So from negative 2, from right here, all the way to 1, to right here, it looks like that. So I'm going to erase everything else. Um, I'll make this a solid line in between here. But then the next question is, Solid or dotted here? Solid or open? Take a good look. Open, not including negative 2. Solid or open here? 
Okay, that's going to be solid. Okay. All right, this one right here. What shape is this? Straight line. Straight line. What's the slope? Slope is one. Okay, so it goes up from left to right. And where does it cross the y-axis? Crosses the y-axis at one. So it's going to cross here. Rise one, run one. Rise one, run one. So it looks something like this. Okay, you know for a fact we've got to erase this stuff, right? There's no way this can be it because then it wouldn't pass the vertical line test. So I'll get rid of this stuff very gently, okay? And it looks like this line where? Oops. Greater than 1. So everywhere where it's greater than 1, so it's going to be this. So this just happens to connect up right there, okay? So I could start here and go up here, turn the little corner. I don't have to pick up my pencil or anything like that. Okay. Nice little piecewise function. Okay. I uh, had another question over here. Does that help? Oh, let's see. Mix, let's make sure we answered all the questions. Um, it says, find the domain of each function. Well, you could look at it here and figure out what it is, or you could just look in this and say, well, I need to find the domain. Let's squish everything onto the x-axis. These points would come up here, these points would come down here, and this goes on forever. So the domain is negative 2, 2, infinity. Round here, round here, okay? Uh, range. Squish it onto the y-axis. Down here, squish over here. So it starts down here. If I went back 2 and the slope is 3, I'd have to go down... Six. So this is going to be negative 6 to infinity. Round around infinity. What about the negative 6? Also round because it's not included. And then it says locate any intercepts. Graph each function based on the graph. Find the range. So we basically answered everything. Uh, that's the intercept right there. It only crosses at the origin. Okay. John, what was your question? Sure, you're going to see those on the test, so let's take a look at one of those. Uh, let's see. Let's look at problem number 55. This is on that same page, or page 277. And it says f of x equals 2 minus x, and g of x equals 3x plus 1. And it wants us to find this f of g of x, uh, f of f of x, g of f of x, and g of g of x. Okay, All good practice. I'm not going to find all those. I'll find just two of them. Let's find f of g of x. Remember, you can also write that this way. My O is a little bit big. Normally looks about like that. Okay. So what are we going to plug into what? We're going to plug g into f of x, okay? If we're going to do this right and make sure we, we think about this the, the right way, you'd want to look at this and you'd want to say, do I have to throw out anything to start with? Because composite functions are really difficult to work with as far as figuring out what the domain is. Do I have to throw anything out to start with? Nope. Everything's just fine. I'm going to take that and I'm going to plug it into 2 minus something. That something is 3x plus 1. And then I just simplify so 2 minus 3x minus 2, so I get negative 3x, okay? That's the answer. What about the domain? Where did you get the, uh, the minus 2? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, what did I call that the other day? Cranial flatulence. Okay. Uh, 2 minus 1 is the 1. Okay. So what's do we need to throw out anything in the end once we've simplified? Nope. So the domain is all reals. Okay. And that's going to happen on each one of these because you'll notice no, no even roots, no division, and no logarithms. So we're going to have all real numbers here. Okay, let's take a look at one that's a little bit more interesting. Let's take a look at number 59. Okay, on 59, they give you f of x equals x plus 1 
over x minus 1. And g of x is equal to 1 over x. And I want you to find f of g of x. And I want you to state the domain. Okay, go ahead. This is on your assignment. You're not wasting any time at all. Okay. And this would be a good thing to know how to do. Okay, we're going to start with our 101 percenter. Josh, what do we do first? Okay, so <coughs> tell, me, tell me what to write. Okay, so that's the right setup. This is f of g of x. f is something plus 1 over that same something minus 1. And what we're plugging in is this g of x, so we plug this in here. If we're going to get the domain right, because we're usually asked about the domain, we'd want to look at what we start with and throw anything out that doesn't work in the beginning. Okay? So, Nate, what doesn't work in the beginning? Do we need to throw anything out here? Okay, let's, let's take a look. We started with G, so let's look at G. Is there anything we can't plug into G? We can't plug in a zero. So we'll, we'll throw out zero to begin with. We're going to keep track of this for the time being. We're just going to leave it there. We're going to come back to that in just a second. So the next thing we do, Chase, is what? Uh, well, you can't plug in a one either. You're right, but let's get to that at the end. Okay? You're ahead. You're fine. Yep, so we're going to get a common denominator. So this is going to be 1 over x plus 1 is x over x, 1 over x. So we basically need a common denominator of x on the top and the bottom. So here's what we get. We get 1 plus x over x, and then we get 1 minus x over x. Okay, and Kirsten, what do we do next? Okay, we never divide by a fraction, so I'm going to take this one, cross it off, and I'm going to write it up here once I flip it over. So this is x minus 1 here. Okay, Caitlin, what can I do now? Mm -hmm, right here. Cross out the x's, okay, because it's, it's this fraction here times this fraction here. So I've got a factor down here that's exactly the same as the factor up here. So now here's where we are. We've got 1 plus x over 1 minus x. Can we do anything else to simplify this? Okay, this is the simplified version, okay? So the answer is 1 plus x over 1 minus x. Okay, If you want to put the x's first, that's totally okay. It doesn't matter. But this is the rule f of g of x, okay? That's what we get there. Now, the domain, we already knew we had to throw out 0, Chase alluded to the fact there's another number that we have to throw out, and the easiest place to find it, generally speaking, is right here. Look at the end result. Look at how it's simplified. And what can't we plug in here now? We can't plug in a 1. So there are two numbers that won't work here. Okay, here's why. If we start with this one right here and we plug in a 1, that's totally okay. 1 over 1 is 1. But then we take that, and where do we try to put it? We try and put it over here. 
and 1 minus 1 would be 0. We'd have a 0 in the denominator of the one we're plugging into, and that's not okay. That's why we throw it out. Okay? So this right there is the answer. Okay? That's a good problem. I would know how to do something like that. Okay? All right. Anything else? Okay. Um, I'm going to let you go. I'll, I'll be around today if you have some questions or something like that. When you walk in here next week, please listen. On Monday, there are 24 people in the class. The way we'll work it is it will be one person per table. I've got a table up here, and then I'll have um, every other computer station. I'll move the keyboard out of the way. So everybody will find their own space to take the test. When you walk in, what's due? The review and... 3.6. If you have any late assignments, they have to be turned in by the time you take the test on that material. Don't bring it on Tuesday or later on Monday and say, hey, can I turn in 3.2? The answer is going to be no. You get it done beforehand. Okay? Walk in here. You're going to set your review in 3.6 up on this desk. Sit down and take the test and you're in good shape. Okay? All right. Have a great day. Have a good weekend.